Have you ever wondered about what is the online world? What does it mean for us? Or how about virtual entities? Is it really important to understand and ask those questions? Well, hi, my name is Muhammad Adib Guzali from Philosophy Studies in FEBUE, and I would like to argue that yes, it is important, and here's why. So in my research, I discuss the ontology of the online world and the relationship between virtual entities. I want to know what the nature of the online world is as a foundation to see how virtual entities interact and also their nature. Is virtual entity a part of being so that it has a subjective dimension, or is it a separate entity from being itself? This question is important because in the online world, the existence of an entity is not limited to being a human, but it can be many, many things. Through a discussion of the ontological nature of the online world as the starting point in providing the context of his research, we can see how the mode of relation of these entities works with each other and even with humans themselves as the subject who make these entities in the first place. Finally, I'll be using Martin Buber's concept of existential relation to answer the big question of this research, namely whether online entities have a subjective dimension or not. I am of the view that online entities are part of being, so they can also be subject in a relationship. And this is what I will find out and argue in my research. But first, we have to know what exactly is the online world. Well, the online world is a space uh, where we can interact via the internet without physical and time constraint. And we can also exist in this world through an avatar, an icon that represents ourselves as a virtual entity. As a result, the online space has also provided a new space for humans to express themselves. But this also has consequences. Namely, with a rapid and massive transition into the online space, this transition creates a blurring of the distinction between physical and virtual worlds. So there is a blurring of facts and fantasy. An example of this is when we create a profile on social media accounts. Filter profiles are often a fantasy space for individuals to become their most ideal self, or even become other entities not limited to human concept. Consequently, the relationship created also tend to have a pseudo or superficial commitment. So the subject is not the focus of the interaction, but only a tool to achieve something. Now why is that? To answer that, we need to know what caused it first. And there are several factors that will help understand how this tendency came about. First, the concept of connectedness. We are always connected 24-7 with a limitation of place and time. And due to the flexibility in experimenting with our identity through avatars in the online world, this gives rise to the second concept, which is role-play or role-playing. We are playing the role of an animal, a fictional character, or even a box if you want to in the online world. In short, we have a new space to express ourselves into anything that we want, Thus, we end up stuck in a mode of life whose consciousness is always divided. And this is the third concept, which is called multi-living. Because we are always connected to the internet, we live in two different worlds. And due to the many connections that we have in our world, our connection becomes only a number or a notification in our phone. The subject no longer sees the connection as an individual, but as a unit. And this is the final concept, which is depersonalization. Now, Essentially, the reason why we see virtual entities and objects is because we have some kind of power over them. We have more control in the online world than the physical world. We can choose to connect with anyone, anytime, and anywhere, but we can also make that relationship disappear instantly. This is the factor why the online space humans tend to see the existence of others and even themselves as objects. An online entity, in short, is a means to an end, a tool to be used for our purpose and not a subject that has an equivalent dimension of subjectivity. So there is no openness between each other. So what are the implications then for human relation? First, I would like to clarify that the problem of seeing human as object is not fully the fault of technology per se, but arises from human nature themselves. Technology and the internet here have a role like a magnifying glass by enlarging the scale for global connectedness and providing new spaces for humans to interact. But because the nature of the online space amplify this tendency, the extreme implication, if not checked, is the death of an individual autonomy and the loss of human subjectivity. In other words, we can forget how to make meaningful connection. That's why to answer this problem, I use Martin Buber's thinking to examine why humans tend to see other people as an object, and vice versa how individuals can overcome this tendency by making a correlation between fellow subjects that exist. Now, Buber's theory at a glance sees human as a relational being in that we are always in relation with something, and there are two modes of existence, namely I-Thou and I-It. 
Now, I thou is a direct authentic relation between subject to subject. It is where both being has an equal understanding and participating in exchanging a dialogue with one another, without any fail or prejudice where we see other as fully as they are and they to us. For example, a discussion between two people perhaps, where everyone participates, listening and talking in some sort of flow, where all of us can express ourselves fully. And the I it mode, on the other hand, is a hierarchical relation, where we see others as an object to use, a thing to be utilized, to be known, or put to some purpose. So there's no genuine dialogue there, because we approach others always with certain intention in mind. For example, seeing others as a means to achieve something for ourselves. Now, this mode doesn't necessarily mean it's manipulative or bad, although it can certainly be all of that. But means to get something can also simply mean getting some, perhaps, food, for example. Like we all did, when we relate to a waiter in order to eat, we use that person uh, for our means. And that's okay, because the both are important for being. We need Tao and it in our life to exist. It's not about which one is better, because they always oscillate like a pendulum. It always become a Tao, and Tao always become an It. Not one or another, but between those two modes. That's why the two mode needs balance. And all of this happened in dialogical space, an existential reality that arises between two beings, two subjects, when they interact, which Buber called in between. So the focus is in the relation, not solely on the individual, but what happens between them. But what about our existence in the online world? Does this mode of existence still apply in the virtual space? Yes, it applies. Dialogical space and Buber's mode of existence are possible in the online world because the condition for a dialogical space is a reciprocal interaction. And through the internet, which is an imaginary but known as real space where we, where we can interact with one another, interaction between beings are also possible in the online world. So that there is a dialogical space that appears in between uh, people. In other words, the dialogue of humanity now appears in real time online. As a result, virtual entities can be considered a subject too, because there is a link between individuals who are related via technology to the virtual entities that they create. Their existence is always tied to our being as human. Behind the avatar, there is an individual and a subject. In short, virtual entities are part of being because they are connected with us and have their own subjective dimension. Now, all of that is great, but how do we make authentic relationship online then? Well, first, through grace, a kind of factuality or givenness in meeting Tao. Because Tao relationship is election and electing. It needs will and grace. You must choose and be chosen to enter Tao in the sense that both parties have to be willing, and then it can begin to form, not just from our own will. The keyword here is dialogue. There must be an in-between moment. Second, there is the realization that the virtual entity is the same subject as us. What is important in Tao is not just to say they are a subject, but our attitude towards it. We must be able to see the entity without preconception boundaries, directly, authentically, as it is, without any veil. The third and hardest stage is the concept of openness. That is, we must open ourselves through love. And for Bubu, love is not just a feeling that a person has, but love is a space where two people can meet intimately and love each other. Even though by opening ourselves we can be heard, despite that we must take a leap of faith because by doing so we can open ourselves to new possibility and grow ourselves as a human being. Now perhaps this seems unreasonable. And it is true that the concept of Tao in Buber cannot be analyzed strictly because it is an existential experience, so it must be felt. Nevertheless, this relationship remains important to be sought and entered. Because through this relationship, human can make a genuine, authentic, and meaningful relationship with others. That amid many relationships that see others as an object, we can also see them as something unique and equal to us. In conclusion, from this research, there are three main points that can be drawn. First, a virtual entity is a part of being, so it is a subject and has a dimension of subjectivity. Second, because they are a subject, Buber mode of existence can be applied to see Tao's relation between virtual entities, due to the possibility of the interaction in dialogical space. Third, thus Buber thoughts can be a new perspective in seeing relationship in the online world. Now, as a closing message, hopefully by this brief presentation, we can have more understanding in relating with each other in the virtual world or in the real world by acknowledging our deep shared humanity with one another. And that's all for me. Thank you so much for watching and see you later.